Guess what, Janelle? I have some good news to share about the seed round that we've been raising for Eric Super Startup. We just closed $2 million last week. Oh my gosh, Eric, that is so exciting. Does this mean that you get to take the entire team to a visa? Uh, uh, actually, actually, no, uh, not exactly. Ugh. Okay, I find that super disappointing. But you know, this does remind me of a question that we received from an Uncapped Notes viewer about how to communicate with your team and what to communicate to your team after you close a round. Yeah, Founder. So in this episode, we're going to explain three things you should clearly communicate to your team now that you're flush with cash after your most recent fundraise. So the first thing to keep in mind through all of your communications is that you want to be very clear with your team. When you were fundraising, part of your communication with your potential investors was around what your plans were for the funds. So now it's time to communicate that plan to your team. That's right. So when you're raising all this capital, this doesn't go directly into your pocket or into that Ferrari or Visa trip that you've been planning. Usually you're communicating to your investors that there is a hiring plan. You need to add more people, more engineers, more marketers. There could also be things like a marketing budget, office expenses, et cetera, as you begin to scale up. So that's something that I think deserves to be clearly defined to your team after you complete your fundraise. And when you're communicating your plan to your employees, something else to keep in mind is that with this fundraise, they may be thinking about improved compensation. So that's another thing that you want to be mindful of and thoughtful about when communicating your plan for the funds to your team. Okay, so the second thing that you want to communicate to your team after your big fundraise is an explanation of how the funds raised are going to affect your company's runway and the timing of your next fundraise. In general, a good best practice after you have done a substantial raise is to make it clear to your team the exact expectations you had set with your investors who just participated in your round, which is this is the milestone that we want to achieve before our next fundraise. So example of this might be for Eric Superco, this fake company that we have just created. <laughs> I might say like, okay, in the next 12 months, I am going to achieve $10 million in revenue and 20 massive enterprise clients, right? That are generating, let's say like $500,000 a year for us. That's a very big kind of expectation. But I say that is going to happen within one year, 12 months. The runway of our company, let's say is 18 months or 24 months. So we have a little bit of buffer, but we have set a very clear milestone. And when we have achieved this $10 million threshold, that's when we're going to raise our next round, maybe a series A or a series B in this case. This is actually something that I find a lot of founders forget to do. They kind of like have a little bit of party, maybe a nice dinner, usually nothing too crazy. And then they kind of go back to work, but yeah. you, you got to really set that kind of milestone of how much money is left and what do we have to achieve with this cash. And finally, founders, it's not the time to get comfortable or complacent. This could be your last fundraise. Yeah, I think that this is a very important communications point. So we had sort of talked about communicating with our team about the expectations of what you're going to do with this raise, the runway, the milestones. But I like this reminder as the third and final thing, which is this might be our last fundraise. So as we're recording this right now, Janelle, it's the end of March 2023. And we're definitely in a downturn right now. Raising capital has gotten harder. Maybe the economy is going to get worse. We don't really know right now. Maybe it gets better. But because of that uncertainty, if you are one of the fortunate few teams that has successfully raised capital now, you cannot count on the market being accessible to you to raise further capital later on. And so the goal here is to be default alive. And how you do that is by using the capital that you've raised to create a great business maybe even a profitable business, who knows? So that if the downturn does come, you are default alive and taking a little bit of that bootstrapper mentality, almost ignoring the fact that you have this money in the bank and not letting it go to your head, but staying scrappy, staying lean and disciplined is going to be, I think the right culture to set. 
So I think that's kind of like the last reminder is for founders to communicate with their teams to stay a little bit paranoid. So founders, are there any things that you've communicated to your team after a fundraise that we haven't talked about in this episode? Drop those stories in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to Uncapped Notes. Thank you.